Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the GPD Pocket. This is a little tiny laptop from the folks at GPD, and they are also the people behind a couple of my other favorite devices, like uh, the GPD Win here, which is a Windows game console, as well as the GPD XD, uh, which is an Android console. I'll put a link down below so you can see all the other things they've put together. And they've been getting more and more ambitious and running a lot of crowdfunded campaigns, and that's what this one is. Uh, so they raised $3.4 million on Indiegogo for this thing, and this is a, a full-blown Windows PC that also runs Linux. There are some Linux issues, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, but uh, all in, it looks like it might be appealing to some folks, especially because it raised so much money on that platform. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds through that Indiegogo campaign. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a look at the hardware now. This cell for $599, rather pricey, especially considering those of us who paid into the Kickstarter, the Indiegogo campaign, uh, only paid $399, so a pretty good discount for going in on the crowdfunded option if you uh, jumped in on that. So again, $599 directly from uh, GPD's AliExpress page. Uh, it's got a 7-inch display, 1900 by 1200, really nice resolution actually. Looks pretty good too, and I'm not seeing a lot of screen bleed through, nice viewing angles on it, uh, all in a pretty nice uh, touch display here. This is not a tablet though, so this is about as far down as that screen will uh, go down, so it's not going to allow you to kind of use it as a tablet. You really are going to be using the keyboard on this. It is powered by an X7Z8750 processor. I believe this is the same chipset that's in the Microsoft Surface 3 that we looked at about a year or so ago. So the performance will be comparable actually to that Microsoft machine, and this one has some active cooling on it with a fan that might give it slightly better performance under load. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. It weighs about uh, 1 pound, 1.085 pounds to be exact, or 480 grams. And it is really well put together here. Really nice construction, all aluminum design here. Uh, the, the tolerances here are very nice as well. There's not, it doesn't feel cheap. It really uh, comes together quite nicely. And uh, they really spent a lot of time getting the build quality on this right. And most of the, in fact, all of the GPD devices I've used in the past were all made out of plastics. This is their first foray into aluminum and they've done a nice job on that for sure. The keyboard here surprised me because I was expecting not to like the keyboard at all, and I'm not totally crazy about it given how small it is, but I'm actually typing on it better than I thought I would, partly because the keys are pretty well spaced apart from each other. Uh, there's a lot of travel on them, so you have a really good feedback, uh, you know, physical or mechanical feedback to your fingers as you're typing here. So it actually isn't bad. You will definitely not type as well on this as you will on a regular keyboard, but I was typing better than I expected, and I'm a keyboard nerd. Uh, this actually uh, surprised me that I didn't hate it, and that's a, that's a good thing coming from me on that. There are a few oddities that I would change. For example, the uh, backspace key is up here. I would have preferred it here just because I'm always reaching for it here and it looks like some prior versions of the device actually had that uh, those keys reversed so I would have liked to have seen that on there it has one of those little nub pointers like you might see on the think pads that we see from Lenovo every once in a while um, and the mouse buttons are down here below the space bar which is bifurcated into two portions there it's not too bad uh, you do have to get used to it a little bit but it does support Bluetooth devices it also supports USB devices so you could plug in uh, external keyboards and mice in fact we're going to be using my my, my Logitech keyboard here uh, while I'm doing some demoing of the unit a little later in the review. On the side here, you've got a bunch of ports of note, well, actually a few, uh, USB 3, a regular USB 3 port. You've got a headphone microphone jack over here. This is an HDMI output, and then you also have a uh, USB Type-C connector, but this is a full service connector. It does power, it does display port, and it does data. Its data port runs at the uh, Gen 1 speed, so that's five gigabits per second, but you are able to actually get this thing connected to two different displays, which I did a little earlier today, uh, and still run something on the main display as well. Those were uh, a 1080p display, a 1440p display, and uh, the display built into this one, which again is 1900 by 1200. So that was pretty nice to be 
able to do all of that uh, with this little computer here. So you could probably dock it into something and get that functionality. I did find that uh, some of my USB Type-C devices worked okay with it, but my Dell monitor that I got in recently that we reviewed, uh, that dock did not work with this. You'll probably want to check with whoever makes the dock that you're looking to make sure it might work with this or at least get a good return policy to make sure the dock you're pairing up with it will work. But it's possible you could basically come home, plug in a single cable and get this working on a full screen monitor. Uh, just note that the processor in here is not going to be as fast as much of the other uh, laptops are out on the market. And right over here is a vent for the active cooling system. It will suck in air, I believe, from the bottom here and blow it out the side. So you probably want to keep that bottom clear as you're using it. And even though it does have active cooling on board, it will see some thermal throttling. We got a score of 83.4% on the 3D Mark stress test, which indicates that uh, if it's stressed for a long period of time, you might see a, a slight degradation in performance, especially when you're gaming. And they're promising about 12 hours of battery life out of this thing. I don't think you'll get that much, but I think you'll get close, probably in the 8 to 10 hour territory, at least from what I've been seeing testing it. So if you're browsing the web and doing Word and Excel and that sort of thing on here, I think you might get uh, close to that mark. It seems to be very power efficient with that Intel Atom processor in here. And if you keep the display dimmed, I think you can definitely push it, push it uh, pretty far. Of course, if you're doing some high-end video watching or uh, doing a lot of gaming or something, that will eat into the battery more. But uh, for general work, I think it'll hold up pretty well throughout the day. And this is something that I think might actually appeal to network administrators who uh, want something full-functioned, rugged, and also very portable, because you can basically just fold it up here and uh, walk around with it. It's automatically protected because it's all metal, and then you can basically pop it out here and get to work on it. Uh, one thing to note, though, is if you're going to be in dark rooms, here, the keyboard is not backlit. So now let's plug this thing in, give it a full uh, amount of power here, and do some performance testing doing all the stuff we usually look at here on the channel. All right, so let's kick things off with some YouTube watching. We've got my 1080p 60 video file playing back here without any issues. Uh, we're not seeing any drop frames here on the stats for nerds. Uh, you might notice some drop frames if you are running this on Google Chrome with this hardware. Uh, Chrome has trouble sometimes with this 1080p 60 video. It's not fully optimized for these Intel chips, so uh, Edge is often the better way to go on low-end hardware like this. But if you are on Edge and playing back some 60 frames per second content, uh, you'll see slightly better performance here. So that seems to be working quite well. The speakers on it aren't bad. They're a little tinny, so it's not going to sound great, but uh, they are loud, which might be good for conferencing and that sort of thing. So if you want better audio quality, of course, hook up something else to uh, listen to music with. Uh, the web browsing experience isn't bad on here either. This is going to be a little slower than some of the current generation low-end laptops. This is a uh, chipset from a year or two ago, so it is a little bit uh, slower perhaps compared to those, but it's still adequate enough given the form factor here that you shouldn't have too many issues as you are uh, browsing around the web here. It does have wireless AC built in, so that uh, certainly helps on the bandwidth side. So it's a good browsing experience, not super fast, but it gets the job done. Now we've been running the speedometer test from browserbench.org to get an idea as to how different computers stack up to each other. On that test, we got a score of 30.43, uh, which puts it uh, actually a little bit ahead of the GPD win that uh, is also running with a similar chipset, also from GPD. So it does web browsing slightly better, at least on that test. And uh, you can see here how it stacks up against more expensive computers. Uh, one in, in particular here is an i3 powered ThinkPad 13 uh, that came in at 86.6. And Microsoft Word performs where I've seen other devices like this perform. Not super fast, but uh, fast enough to get the job done here. So you can scroll through uh, some higher end documents and uh, move things around and make your changes on it. It just won't feel as fast perhaps as that uh, i7 based computer we looked at a little while ago, but good enough to get the job done. Now this is not a gaming device, or at least isn't being marketed as one, but it does have the same chip that we saw in the GPD Win, and it's actually pretty passable for uh, some light gaming. So what we've got now running on the screen here is Minecraft, and we did install the Optifine performance enhancing plugin there to make it run a little better, but running at 1900 by 1200 at 22 frames per second. So not bad, especially considering we have fancy graphics on and all the uh, regular settings enabled. So if you were to maybe turn down the resolution or do some other tweaks, you could probably get a better frame rate out of here, but this isn't bad for what this is running, especially given the small form factor. Now the fan will kick on when it needs to cool itself off, so unlike the GPD Win that had the fan running all the time, uh, this one does uh, turn on and off depending on need. It really is not that loud. You will hear it if you put your ear up next to it, but generally it's not distracting.
distracting. It's a pretty uh, low level fan. And some modern games may run somewhat okay on here. I've got Rocket League running right now at 720p. I turned all the settings down just to get the best possible performance here. And I'm doing about 15 to 20 frames per second. It'll uh, go a little faster when there's less cars on screen with me, but uh, as more action begins happening on screen and the physics engine gets pushed, uh, we see that reduction into the 15 frames per second territory. So not uh, great for gaming. I think your Nintendo Switch will probably do a better Rocket League experience than this will, but uh, this gives you an idea as to the extent of what you might get running from the modern side of things. I was able to get Skyrim running on the GPD Win, which has a similar X7 processor on it, so that may not be out of the realm of possibility if you really turn things down. And I think a lot of older PC games, especially the ones from like eight or 10 years ago, uh, should also run on here at a fairly decent frame rate. But I have found a lot of the indie games work pretty well on this low-end hardware, uh, including Shovel Knight here. So if you can find some indie games that don't have huge system requirements like this one, uh, you should be able to get a solid 60 frames per second uh, throughout all of your gameplay. And there's a lot of titles to choose from on the Steam store that this will support. And these low-end Intel chips actually do fairly well with emulation, even on the higher end of the scale here. So we've got uh, Wave Race running on uh, the Dolphin emulator. I'm getting frame rates around 25 to 30 frames per second, which is definitely playable, uh, depending on what's going on in the scene here. So it'll slow down occasionally like it just did there, but I'm sure you could tweak this to get it working better. And of course, some of the older systems will uh, perform better than what you see here. And on the 3D Mark gaming benchmark called CloudGate, we got a score of 1,967. That puts it slightly below the score that we saw from the GPD win, also by GPD with a similar processor. So it's not uh, as agile on some of the games, at least in its graphics performance, as the uh, GPD win is. But again, they're really marketing and targeting this more towards business users, I think, than gamers. So uh, just keep that in mind. You might want to use this one if you're looking for something portable that can uh, potentially run a few games that you might want to run on the road. Now, a lot of people were curious about the Linux compatibility on on this device. It's one of the major selling points. We've got Windows up right now, of course. I did try to install Ubuntu on it. Unfortunately, it wouldn't boot off of the boot drive that I had to get everything going. I also tried a few other distributions, including Mint Linux. That, that one actually did load up. Uh, however, the screen orientation was all messed up, as you can see in this photo here. When I tried to have the uh, software, the op operating system rotate the display properly, uh, the screen was going blank. So I think there's probably some BIOS issues at play here that are preventing it from working as well as it should. But uh, Linux compatibility is something that they promised on here and I think would make this a really compelling device, especially for uh, system administrators looking for something, again, full featured and portable. So I'm going to hang on to this and reach out to GPD and see if they can get me a BIOS update and we'll revisit its Linux performance when we do that. I will say operating the device in the portrait orientation, it looked like the touchscreen worked and uh, the sound and all the other drivers worked as well. So I think this might be just a couple of tweaks to get it really functional on here, but uh, not quite yet working for me. All right, one last thing to check out on here, and that is its Kodi performance. We're going to start with a low bit rate HEVC file. I think this is two megabits per second at 4K. Uh, no problems here running this. I was checking it earlier, no drop frames or anything. So some of the lower end HEVC stuff, it should be able to handle just fine. Uh, the higher end stuff though, like at 60 megabits per second here with a 10 bit file, uh, not so good. So I think if you are looking at lower end HEVC uh, playback, you'll do fine. But uh, the higher end stuff on here, you'll probably want to stick with your KB Lake processors. But Blu-ray MKV files though do play back uh, without issue as they do on many other devices at this uh, particular configuration. So that was good to see. And I think you'll have a pretty good media playback experience on here overall. I think media playback, especially higher end media playback will impact battery life a little more perhaps than watching YouTube. But uh, generally there's a good amount of battery capacity on this device. And I think you'll be able to get through a pretty decent flight with this. And uh, running Windows 10 now, you could probably get some of the uh, Netflix features. I think you can download Netflix to this one now through some of their Windows Store apps. So overall, a really nice little computer here if you're looking for something like this. Uh, to be honest with you, for me, I wasn't all that attracted to this, but so many of you were interested that I bought one on your behalf to review it. And I actually like it more than I thought I would, which is really kind of funny. So uh, there's certainly a lot of interest in this. That huge amount they raised on Indiegogo does say something. There is a tremendous tremendous amount of at least enthusiast interest in this thing to fund it at that level. So uh, that is certainly a consideration. It actually reminds me a little bit of a Atari computer that was out 
about 25 years ago or so. It was in uh, the Terminator movie when they hacked the ATM. It's got a similar uh, look and feel to that one. But uh, here you've got a fully functional Windows computer and hopefully a Linux one too. And we'll come back and look at that in the very near future. So it is rather expensive for what it is. I think it was reasonable at the price that I paid, $399 through the Indiegogo. $599 is a bit to ask, but I think if you are someone who sees a real utility for something like this, that you know, a really nicely well-built computer that uh, is fully functional and very rugged uh, with no moving parts, of course, then it might be worth uh, spending that much on it. But uh, you will, of course, be able to spend the same money and get more powerful computers just in larger footprints. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger, and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.